have some special guests today. Do you guys, you guys want to come up? Do you have a storybook for me? Do you, do you guys care if we read a story? No? Is that going to be different if we read a story? These are oh, two stories. Uh, I don't know. Oh, that's yours? I'm sorry. Let me, let me get out of your way, princess. I see. Wow, these are, these are really nice storybooks. Um, this is a kind of a long story, but how, how about if we, how about here, how about if you help me hold the book? Can you mm -hmm. help this side? Oh, thank you, thank you. How about, how, you know what, how about if we sing the story? Yeah, let's, let's sing the story instead. Can you hold the paper? Okay. Ready? You gotta hold it. You gotta hold it. Oh, thank you. So this is how it was, a silent night like any other. When heaven sent the one, the one that we would call a savior, and redemption.
that a good story? Yeah. yeah. That was a good story. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. One more time. One more time. That. that was a good story. I liked it.
Thank you, Walton Choir. Nice song today. Well, if you have your Bibles, are we going to put it on the screen as well? Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. Uh, we'll begin to read in verse 30, 27 and read down through the 38th verse. And would you stand to honor the Word of God? And I think the scripture will be up here. Is that right, uh, Jerry? Good. So if we can stay together here, I'll try to lead us a little bit. All right, let's begin with verse 27. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn the other. And also, if someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. And if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting to get back anything. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because He is kind and ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. May that measure, uh, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use will be measured to you. May God add his blessings upon the word, the word of God. You may be seated. That's quite an assignment, isn't it? You wonder what kind of economy were they in at that time? There's some challenges. You could summarize that whole passage of scripture by saying that uh, we are called to be generous people. We are challenged to be generous. You see, when God is first in our lives, he blesses the rest. If you don't remember anything else from the message today, remember that. When God is first in our lives, he blesses the rest. You see, generosity, including the tithe, is a way of expressing our gratitude to God. Generosity is love. Generosity is a principle of prosperity. Good things come to generous people. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20. Often we need to clarify our values and priorities so that we can become more of what God plans for us to be and to experience. If we would put our lives in order according to God's principles, he would bless us beyond our measure shaken together and running over. Now, some of this you have to work out for yourself between you and the Lord. Because you see, generosity is really love in action. It's not a legal thing. It's not uh, hard and cold. It's not fast. How can you measure love? But when we love, we give. And we are entering into the Christmas season. And it's a time of giving. You've already been thinking about it. I have had several solicitations in my mailbox. And if you've been anywhere around shopping, Walmart, uh, uh, Penny's, Sears, or whatever grocery stores you have around here, you probably have seen the Salvation Army, and rightly so, because this is the spirit of giving. And there's more things to give other than just materialism. Now, some of you are going to say, well, the preacher's going to preach on tithing today. Well, if the shoe fits, wear it. 
But that's not just the main thrust of my message. I want us to be generous people. I said earlier uh, last Sunday that uh, through the month of December, I would challenge you from the book of uh, Proverbs, uh, or the Psalms rather, to taste and see that the, go- the Lord is good. Taste and experience the goodness of God. And when you are generous, because God has been so generous to us, I know sometimes we feel like we've been dealt a, a, a rough hand, a rough time in life. And life is ups and downs, and we thank God for the valleys as well as we thank Him for the mountains. But God is the same whether it's in the valley or the mountain. His love is constant, and so should our love be constant. You see, generosity is love in action. Give and it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. First of all, if you have your outline there in the service folder, totally give yourself to God. This is the Holy Spirit uh, speaks to us about giving ourselves totally to Him. He sanctifies what we give, but our part is to concentrate, consecrate. Yes, concentrate, but also consecrate what we have. He sanctifies, we consecrate, we give it to Him. You see, generosity begins when I really give myself to Jesus and His Lordship. Surrender to Jesus my ownership of what he has given to us, to me. This is consecration to God. And until that happens, nothing else seems to happen. You see, the first thing you give to God is yourself. There's a blank there if you want to fill it in. Give to God yourself, totally. Everything you've got. That sounds like a big measure, doesn't it? But in desperate times, what do we do? We cry out for God. So why not give him everything and let him be in charge? When I give him everything, when I'm generous with him, with my time, my talent, my treasure, with my spirit, when I let him fill me with his Holy Spirit and I consecrate everything to him, then I can expect good things to happen. You see, true stewardship doesn't start with what I put in the offering plate at the church. Some Christians never learn this principle. In such cases, don't be surprised if and when there uh, is a loss of blessings financially, loss of blessings spiritually, loss of blessings emotionally, because we have not first given everything over to God and His Lordship. Do you really proclaim His Lordship in your life? That is a generous call on His part for us to respond to. You see, let's take a father that goes to a McDonald's. I like McDonald's fries. Don't you? Amen. Amen. <laughs> 30 minutes from now, you may have some, huh? <laughs> but if I take a, a grandson to McDonald's when he's in uh, preteen age, and I buy him some fries and a burger and and uh, I don't buy me any fries, but I buy a burger, and I love burgers. Uh, that's a staple meal of my life. And so we sit down, and we begin to eat, and I say to him, may I have one of your fries? And what is the typical response of a seven, eight-year-old? No. <laughs> I used to say to my wife, if you want what I have, won't you buy you some? But that child doesn't realize that dad is the one that purchased those fries for him. And then that dad gave those fries to him. And then he builds a fence around the fries and says they're mine. Do you see the spiritual application? Jesus Christ has given us life and blessings. He's blessed us in so many different ways. Especially, most of us have been blessed financially. We are the wealthiest country of the world. 
the, the least of your income, whatever it might be. In other countries, many other countries, you would be wealthy. But we take those blessings and then we put our fence around them and say, no, these are mine. We retire and move to Hernando, Inverness, Crystal River, Floral City, Ocala, <laughs> Homosassa Springs, Dunella, Rainbow River. And we say, oh, well, you know, this is my time. It's my time. See, I, I like to ask some of you questions, and I usually don't get too many good answers from my perspective. So what do you do every day? Now, I know if you've been around long and you've learned how to evade that answer, you say, oh, I stay busy all the time. Or we say, well, my wife has a honeydew list. Uh, I never get caught up. I have a preacher friend who retired and moved to, to Port Orange. And I was living for a couple of months over at the beach. And we would meet together and he, he couldn't find anything to do. So I would ask him every, every Sunday, we would have lunch or dinner that night. So what are you going to do, Gene, this week? He said, I don't know. You see, we got time, and if we're generous with that time, we'll find meaningfulness. We will find ways to serve other people. And before you go home today, you're, you're going to be given an opportunity or two to how you can put some feet to your generosity by sharing time and energy and an invitation to this church. Do you know that more people attend, uh, help me if I'm wrong, Michelle, uh, candlelight services uh, on uh, New Year's Eve and Christmas Eve than any other time of the year, including Easter. We've got a sign that's going to be erected out here tomorrow, I think, that will tell the schedule of our, our uh, Christmas time celebrations because there's people that are looking for a place to go. There's Christmas Live. There's come and go communion, there's candlelight services, there's Sunday services, and they will go where they're invited or where they are made aware. There's some people who will never go to church unless you invite them. That's sobering, isn't it? So how are you gonna use your time? You're gonna receive, if you want, a, a little flyer, it's eight and a half by 11 that has something to do every day of this month that is a, a generous kindness act. It's like hug somebody one day. Wouldn't be bad, husbands, if you'd hug your wife once in a while <laughs> during December. Our wife, it wouldn't be too bad if you hugged him. So you, you got time. You see... We lose blessings because we do not give. The height of ingratitude is for God to give you something or to give me something and then for us to put a fence around it and act as if it is ours and not want to share it or to give it back. And of all of a sudden, then, we become possessive with it. So many times we become possessive of the things God has given us. You see, generosity is a response of grace. The second thing you ought to remember, if you don't remember anything else, is generosity is a response of grace. It's a response of love. Generosity is giving from what we have with love. Now, I know we enjoy giving gifts to grandkids, don't we? You, you blow the budget, ladies, grandmas. You've already blown the budget, probably, if you've been to Black Friday and Cyber Week and all that for the grandkids, for the children. Why do you do that? Because you... It's stronger than that, isn't it? Because you... That's right. 
And so why should we not be generous with God? Because we love Him. Why should we build a fence around our possessions, our time, our energy? It doesn't take long to do a kind thing for somebody. It doesn't take long to hand them a card like you have in your bulletin today. Uh, it's an invitation card. I want to talk more about it before we go home today. But it's printed just for us. And on the back side it says, you're invited to join me at my home church. And there's a space for you to put your name there and a phone number if you want. You can have as many of these you want. I have 2,500 of them. <laughs> and they're free. But you could take four or five and, and put them in a Christmas card or the person that brings your groceries out from Publix or the, wherever you shop, Win dixie hand that to them. Or ladies at the beauty shop or in a restaurant. There will people come to church if you will invite them, if you'll be generous with your time and energy, if you really express love. Number two, learn the benefits of biblical generosity and apply the principle of generosity to real life. Key words there. Real life. You could summarize this as a point of obedience. I'm amazed about what God's word says about us and our giving, our grasping and our lack of generosity. Go to the concordance and look up uh, some verses in the Bible and, and refer to giving our gifts or giving our generosity. First of all, take some common words in the Bible for a moment. Let's see. How many times uh, these words are used in the Bible? Let's take the word believe or the word believing or the word believer. There are 272 verses that talk about belief in the Bible. There are only 371 verses that talk about prayer in the Bible. I say so often the first thing we could do is pray. Prayer is important, isn't it? but only 371 verses in the whole Bible talks about prayer. There are 714 verses that talk about love and loving. God is love, and we believe that Christians should love. But there's only 714 verses in the whole Bible about love and loving. Now, those words we use quite often, we talk about them. But hold on to your seatbelt for a moment. Talk about giving, generosity, and being a giver. 2,162 verses talk about giving. 2,162 verses talk about giving. Now, before you get sidetracked on a bar, sidebar issue, I didn't say giving financially. I just said giving. Give and it shall be given you. Give of your time, give of your talent, give of your energy, and God will bless you. One of the best cures for depression is go out and find somebody to give an encouraging word, someone who is ill or sick, someone who is in worse condition than you are, and you'll be blessed because that's the way God blesses us as we give and encourage and support one another as we're generous. No man lives like an island unto himself. No, I've been talking about relationships. Relationship with God, relationship with fellow man. One of the best things we can do during the month of December in our community is to be generous in our relationships. I gave you some hearts out. I promised another 500 hearts, but they got stuck in Daytona yesterday. <laughs> I've got just a handful, but if you can hold on till next Sunday, I've got... Uh, uh, 400 of them coming or 500 of them coming now don't be like one of the choir members today he reached in his pocket and he usually carries something to soothe his throat and he put something in his mouth and said it doesn't have much taste <laughs> and he discovered that he had put his heart <laughs> in his mouth now if you haven't been here for a couple of weeks we gave out hearts little wooden hearts uh, I've got one in my pocket. It, uh, I think I got it. Yeah, there it is. I got a bigger one than you, but uh, 
I keep it there and it's amazing how many times it falls out inadvertently and it gives me an opportunity to tell somebody that God loves me and also loves them. Uh, Michelle, you gave your heart away to Chris. Well, that was years ago, wasn't it? Sorry about that. <laughs> See, one thing is clear. Both the Old Testament and the New Testament, God desires to bless us and provide us with the necessities of life. And that's a fact of life. God desires to take care of our needs and my needs. We're his children, and don't we try to take care of our children? And if we, being earthly beings, know how to take care of our kids, how much more does God take care of his kids? You see, that's a fact of life. We're his children, and if God sees the sparrow fall, and God can count the hairs on our head, and I dropped a couple of this morning, then he knows about us, he knows everything about us, and God wants to take care of us and our needs. Now for God to take care of our physical needs, for God to take care of our financial needs, there are two things that we are to do. Point number three, we are to ask God to provide our needs and to meet those needs. We are told to ask God. Someone has said, can you answer a letter that's never been written? God wants you to ask him. It's like a letter. He knows what you have need of, so go ahead and ask him. For asking him moves his heart. Did you ever go to a parent and they knew why you were there, you were going to ask them for a favor, and yet they would not get around to talking about it until you asked them, and then they would say, well, I've just been waiting for you to ask me. You see, God's got a lot of blessings up there in heaven, and they've got your name on them. Amen. A little more excited about that now, please. God's got blessings up there with your name on them. Amen. All right, thank you. And ask him for some of those blessings according to your needs. And if you've been generous with him in your service, he'll respond. You say, Pastor, where do you get that from? Well, it's the Lord's Prayer. When Jesus taught us to pray, he said, give us this day our daily bread. And if you read the correct translation, that is not just something for us to consume but it refers to the necessities of life. What you need today, God will take care of. Maybe not what you want. You may not get filet mignon. You may be at bologna. <laughs> or I'll settle for hamburger. <laughs> you see, the first thing we need to do is to come to God in prayer. The Apostle Paul said it too, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. In other words, Paul said, in everything in your life, present your request to God. Your financial needs, as God's child, you need to ask Him to help you. Sometimes we ask Him to help us and we expect to, something to pennies from heaven. In these days, dollars from heaven. When really, you need to ask Him to help you to go find a job, to get a job. But he always says, come to me and ask for what you need. And if you need a job, ask him to give you guidance and direction to find that job at the right place, to open doors. Amen. Number four, if you and I are going to receive what God has for us, we are to be generous in our giving. It is a fact, it is a biblical truth, it's a principle that God doesn't bless a miser. Didn't get any amens on that. God doesn't abundantly bless a stingy person. If you're stingy, you're just going to live on meager affairs. You'll grumble and complain about things in the church. And can I take a sidebar and get a little personal? I've discovered in 25 years of pastoring and another 25 years of doing what I'm doing, 
Those people who complain in the church usually are not very generous people. They're misers. They're stingy. You say financially, well, that too, but of their time, of their talent. They may say, I'm tired of singing in the choir. I'm tired of being a musician. You know, complacency, complacency can set in on us at any age, and particularly when you get as old as I am and you are. I got some amens then. Well, I didn't get an amen, I just got yes. That's true, thank you. You see, the moment that you and I begin to become giver, givers in our lifestyle is the moment that we do it uh, biblically. All of a sudden, the material wealth falls into a biblical focus and perspective. God does take care of me as I take a generous attitude. He will take care of you if you'll be generous. I know I'm meddling today, but I'm going to be gone before too long. <laughs> we got four new resumes before us. We're going to be meeting on those. And if you're a guest, I'm just a stand-in. I'm an interim pastor. I'm a has-been. No, I didn't mean that to bring that, but go ahead anyway. <laughs> Being a generous giver has its rewards. Luke chapter 12, verse 33, press down and shake together. It said, Jesus himself has said, I'll meet your needs if you put me first. Our problem is we want to leave our needs met. We want to have our needs met without putting him first. And we say, Lord, if you'll bless me, I will put you first. No, it comes around a different way. Put him first and God will bless you. Amen. How many times have you and I prayed and asked God to bless us financially when we have robbed our God ourselves? Now, our problem is we want to have our needs met without really putting him first in our stewardship. Then we run out of resources and we're in trouble because we haven't consecrated everything to him and made him Lord of all and been generous to him. And so when we say, God give to me, he says, you've already got it. You kept it. Did you get that truth? If you keep it, you got it. Give it to him and he'll press it down and running over. Okay, there's five lessons I want you to learn from this message and then we're going home. Go get a hamburger. <laughs> or a filet mignon. Generosity is not to be separated from my behavior. Don't talk about it, just do it. Giving is a key test of my spiritual commitment. You know, I believe strongly that you write the first check. You give the first of your fruits before you pay anything else. I had two paychecks that fell in the same week, and I didn't know I got paid that way. And I had to write a check that today that was a little bit bigger than I normally write. And can I be honest with you, it hurt me a little bit. <laughs> but I said, no, I've made a commitment to be generous with God and write from the first fruits. Amen. I'll be taken care of this week. Generous, generosity protects us against financial enslavement. The key word is enslavement. If you're having troubles, you ought to work a budget because that'll help you set aside the values and the priorities of life. It's amazing how much money we spend because we have a credit card or a debit card and it just, it's easy, you know. My wife used to say, if I got checks, I got money. <laughs> I tried to explain that to her. 
She never did really understand that. <laughs> giving makes us happy and joyous. You're going to be happy this Christmas as you give gifts to your grandkids and your kids and to one another. Amen. Let me tell you, you'll be happier. Is that a good word? If you are going to give God some gifts that you haven't given. Generosity blesses us in return. Proverbs 22, verse 9. He who gives, or he who is generous, will be blessed. There's a lot of blessings that you haven't experienced that's got your name on them. I don't know whether this will happen or not when you get to heaven, but I've heard stories, uh, analogies, saying that when you get to heaven and walk through the gates and look around the gates of heaven and you see this big room with your name on it and there's a whole lot of boxes there that there's blessings that was there for you but you were not generous and you did not qualify for him to give them to you. Now we're going to stand in a moment, but not right now. When you leave tonight, today, I haven't preached that long, have I? Uh, there's going to be ushers. We've got 2,500 of these. Don't take a handful that you're not going to use, but take as many as you will give out this week. As you leave, there will be two ushers that will have them or two ladies. Then there is a calendar of things you can do every day to be generous. Uh, there, let somebody in front of you in line at uh, Walmart. They're pushing and shoving. Just say, go ahead or whatever. These are just simple things. I want you to be generous. Taste and see that well, the Lord is good. I want the community to know that people at Hernando Church of the Nazarene are generous people by our spirit, by the way we love. Okay? I want you to do one more thing. Oh, by the way, those will be available to you also. And if you're out of hearts, I've got new hearts coming next week. In a moment, I want us to stand, and I want us to group ourselves together for a final prayer. I hope you feel comfortable with this. You need to know some people around you that you don't know. You need to pray for them, and they pray for you. But at least one person in the, the groups of four or five or six to pray that your little group will be generous during the month of December, that your little group will taste and see the Lord is good. Amen. Will you do that? And that'll be our benediction. We're almost ready to go. You'll still beat the Baptists. <laughs> the Assembly of God people, they won't be there for two hours. <laughs> so you got plenty of time. Stand and, and join together. Step uh, in the aisle or around each other and just don't let anybody stand alone. And just uh, get together and, and pray. Hold hands. All right. And just one or two of you pray aloud. Don't, someone may not want to pray aloud, but somebody in the group, just pray a brief prayer around you. And Father, we're praying that every member in the group will be more generous in their lifestyle to show love to our community, acts of kindness. Help us to show more love to the world, to invite them to a place of worship, to our special services. Father, I pray that you'll help us to be more generous in our love and commitment to you with those things that you've entrusted to us, the financial blessings, the material blessings, health and strength, wellness. We are grateful. We love you, Father. Praise be to thee. Lead us in the doxology.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.